Welcome everyone to another Silicon Labs product podcast. This episode is focused on helping you better understand the thread mesh networking protocol that's been developed for IoT products. I'm joined by Asim Ashemi. He's a design engineer at Silicon Labs, and he is absolutely one of our most prolific technology writers. So you may have seen some things that he's posted on our site or read one of his app notes. Uh, so I'm really uh, thankful that he's here. I recently attended a training that Awesome provided on Thread, and that's sort of what brought me to, to ask you to join me today. So thanks for joining the podcast, and I'm sure that our listeners are going to learn a lot from this conversation. Thanks, Carl. I'm really excited to be here. And uh, we, we are also very lucky to have David Meissner join our conversation. Uh, David, you are the IoT product manager for our Zigbee and Thread solutions. So with the two of you here, I think we're ready to start discussing Thread. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Well, I'll send them to start. I thought you did a great job explaining one of the core benefits of Thread, and that is it's based on IP. Mm -hmm. I think it, this is critical for our listeners to understand. Can you give your findings on what benefits IP provides these end products? Yeah, totally. I mean, um, to start with, Thread is an IP-based, low-power mesh networking protocol, which means that it brings IP, which is pretty much the backbone of the Internet, to the smart home devices. And, and what that means is that you've, with Thread, you've got the, the, all the power of the internet connected to your smart home cameras and uh, locks and lights. And, and, and this seamless connectivity is, is really powerful. First of all, because it's IP, there is no need uh, for translators or mapping between a Thread network and the internet which takes away, takes away a lot of uh, development cost and complexity and also simplifies the, the consumer experience. Another advantage of being IP-based is the reuse of all the open standards that have been developed and used on the Internet for decades on your thread network or your smart home uh, network. And, and this becomes really powerful when we consider uh, the thread security because when we say thread is IP-based, that means that thread has the potential to offer you the same security standards and protocols that you use for your credit card transactions on uh, your smart lock, your smart uh, door, your smart camera, which is a remarkable feature when we think from, from the consumer's perspective, because now we're taking security to the point of trust. Thread offers technologies that are already mature and that people already trust, which can accelerate the adoption of IoT in the home and the building. Another, another thing just on that topic is when we're trying to get so many companies together and working in a, a place like your home, uh, having that common IP uh, you know, history and all that infrastructure already in place, it makes it a lot easier for them all to jump into this marketplace. That's exactly true, and that's why Thread has been attracting uh, so many of the IoT convergence initiatives, and they have prioritized Thread as one of their uh, or pushed forward thread as one of their uh, main implementations since since it, it, it's built on IP that uh, sort of glue that connects the whole the, the, the internet together and to that point also I think another one of the other advantages of thread being IP based is the freedom that developers have in choosing the application layer right because now thread treats all the application layer transactions as IP traffic you can pretty much have any application layer that is IP based on top of that, which simplifies the developer experience greatly. And you'd mentioned in your, your training that, that that allows different types of applications to focus on what they're good at, but not have to reinvent a network or join a network that they're not common with. So they, they have that common network, which takes care of all that networking and interconnect, and they can just focus on the application that makes sense for their appliance or their product. Well, so one other key aspect for the home network and for the IoT products is low power. Uh, can you share a couple uh, reasons or, or things that Thread has put into its uh, specification that helps these low end devices or you know low power end devices? Uh, so yeah, this is a great this is a great point. Thread is first of all based off the 15.4 radio, which is the same radio for Zigbee. It's uh, a trusted mature technology. We already know that it's it has a good performance at low power. And on top of that, Thread does all its routing in six low pan, which is pretty much a simplified version of IPv6 for low power devices. And that's how 
thread can extend the reach of IP to low power constraint devices. Okay, well, hey, anything that they can do to reduce the amount of batteries I have to replace out of these end devices, that's, that's perfect. So I'm, I'm glad they got some of those core things built into it for low power. So, David, not to give Awesome all the, the time on the, the podcast, the question I'd like to ask you is all the growing interest that I've seen lately. Uh, there's a lot of deployment and a lot of uh, news articles about Thread and how it's being introduced. Just recently, you know, I have an Eero mesh system in my house, and it supports Thread. We have just recently saw that Apple's new uh, HomePod, the Mini, includes Thread as uh, its networking capabilities. So can you share? There's been a lot of groups and a lot of announcements lately on Thread. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. And uh, just to add to that list, just yesterday, Nanoleaf also announced their next generation of lighting products. Uh, and those are go- also going to have support for Thread. So I think we're definitely seeing an uptick in Thread in the market, and we're seeing a lot of momentum behind it. Um, so this might be kind of the time it finally starts to take off. Um, and then, you know, specifically some of the groups behind Thread, the most prominent one right now is probably Project Connected Home over IP. So this is a working group that's part of the Zigbee Alliance. Um, and what they're trying to do is create a unifying application layer for smart home devices that can run on top of any IP technology. So Thread is one of those IP technologies, but this will also work with things like Wi-Fi or cellular. And it's really the goal there is to simplify the development, but also make it easier for the consumer to use. And there's a lot of big players in the industry that are driving this effort, including Apple, Amazon, Google. They really really see right now that the smart home is fragmented. It's confusing to the consumer. It's difficult for the developer, right? You have to develop separate products for HomeKit, a separate product to work with Google, a separate product to work with Alexa. And Project Chip is really going to make that a lot simpler so that you only have to develop one Project Chip device, uh, and then it'll work with all of these ecosystems that also support Chip. As Awesome was mentioning, you know, Thread is the low-power IP technology that Chip is targeting. So for things that are battery-powered, door sensors, window sensors, um, door locks, uh, you know, this is going to be a very, very powerful uh, way to increase adoption in the smart home. And then also, so that's primarily targeted at the smart home. Also on the commercial building side, there's a new liaison called IP Bliss, which is short for IP Building and Lighting Standard. And they have similar goals in the commercial building space to make it simpler to integrate all of these um, IoT devices into the building. IP Bliss is a little different in that it's not a new standard. They're not trying to develop anything new, but they are looking at how do they take existing IP technologies in the commercial building space and make it easier to integrate those into the building um, and again, these will all be based on IP so that, you know, IT administrators can can work with these technologies, right? They already know how to manage an IP network. So if all of their IoT products are based on IP, it's going to be a lot easier to integrate these into the, the commercial building space as well. That, that's great because there's one thing I think will really escalate the adoption of the smart home, and that is when people can buy something based upon the need or the value of the product and not be required to say, does that fit my ecosystem? Does that fit into, you know, what I can connect with. It's, it's based on need, and so I think that's going to be great when uh, multiple vendors can deploy something that fits, you know, a single network. That'll, that'll be great. So my, my last question, just to wrap this up, this has been really great, but, you know, now our customers are interested. You've done a great job explaining this to our listeners. What, how can they get started? What does Silicon Labs have to offer as far as Thread, uh, people interested in getting started with Thread? Yeah, great question. Um, so we support OpenThread on pretty much all of our EFR32MG series of devices. Um, so OpenThread is the implementation of the Thread spec that was initially released by Google. Um, this is really being adopted widely by the industry. Um, and there's a couple ways that you can get started with OpenThread. So we do have support for it through GitHub. Um, so some customers really, really enjoy the GitHub experience. They like to go and grab the latest bleeding edge code. Um, and you can download OpenThread and get started that way. Uh, but we've also taken that and we've integrated it into our GSDK. And this has made it a lot simpler for developers to develop an OpenThread application on EFR32. It allows you to pull it into Simplicity Studio. You get to take advantage of all of the tools, the, you know, the tutorials that walk you through how to build a sample application, um, how to configure the device with the GUIs that Studio provides, how to use things like Network Analyzer and Energy Profiler. And we've already gotten a lot of feedback from customers that they really like how how easy it has been to develop a thread application because it's now integrated into uh, Simplicity Studio through the GSDK. So we have both of those routes, either through GitHub or through Studio, depending on kind of the developer preference. 
but yeah, so that's that's support that exists today. We're going to continue to develop that. You know, in our next release at the end of the year, we'll keep adding features to that. And then eventually, this is what, you know, again, we'll have support for project chip through. Again, going back to kind of specific devices, Thread does have larger memory requirements in terms of flash and RAM. Uh, so if you're developing something like a project chip on top of OpenThread, we probably recommend some of the larger EFR parts like EFR 32 MG12 or the MG21. But again, all, all of that is supported through through GitHub and the GSDK. All right, great. And another thing that you mentioned, Asim, was the training that was done at the Works With. There was quite a bit of uh, material available that covers both the open thread use case, uh, how to develop, download it onto our MG devices, but also a great demonstration given by Google and Silicon Labs on open thread and chip being used to demonstrate a door lock. So that would be another useful thing. I'll, you know what? I'll put that in the details for this podcast so people can click on that URL and, and go straight to see those trainings as well. Well, guys, that's uh, all the time we have for this episode. I'd like to thank both of you, Asim and, and David. Thanks for taking the time today. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Sure, and I'd like, I'd like to thank our listeners for your continued interest in the Silicon Labs products, and I hope you'll join us for future episodes. And until then, take care.